Hello and welcome to Tech24 with me, Rebecca Bowring. Coming up in the programme, in a little town in the heart of Mormon country, a top secret project is rising from the dust. We take you to the world's biggest spy centre needed for cyber security or an unwanted intrusion into our online lives. Plus, in Test24, HTC's biggest hope for getting back in the game, we check out the One X, a mighty beast of a smartphone spoiling for a fight with Samsung and Apple. Now, what if your government could store and review your electronic footprint? Well, some say that's exactly what will happen when a one million square foot data center opens in the US state of Utah in 2013. Built by the National Security Agency, the $2 billion facility aims to become an analysis hub for vast quantities of internet traffic data collected both at home and abroad. The centre is also critical to unscrambling encrypted information. Our tech expert Eric Olander joins us now. So tell me, Eric, what can the NSA actually see with this facility and how are they collecting the data? Well, this is really the biggest problem. We don't actually know what the NSA can see and that's what makes people very, very nervous. They are sucking in huge amounts of information now from voice data to internet data to uh, you know your emails and all of this different information. They're slicing and they're dicing it up. Now, legitimately, they're saying they're looking for terrorists. The bigger concern is we, again, don't actually know what's being seen and what's not being seen. And we, as the citizens, don't have a right to actually know. And that's what makes people like me very, very concerned. But wouldn't the US be foolish not to build something like this? It's not building it that's the problem. It's, again, what are they doing with the information that's the problem? And is there any transparency? We presumably live in an open society, a democratic society, that has processes and due process of law. The problem is, is that this is so much closed. And we've seen this since, really, 9-11 and the Patriot Act, that the government government's pulling in much more information, they're putting people on no travel list, they're surveying people, and they're again not putting them through a court system and that's really, that's the problem that a lot of people have. Isn't this though the risk that we run as internet users, that we have a data trail and really we should be more aware of that? You should be aware that any time you are on the internet now and any time you use a cell phone, you are being followed. Now that's not to say necessarily by the government, you're being followed by your internet service provider, you're being followed by Google, you're being followed by advertisers. There really is no such thing anymore as online privacy or telephone privacy for that matter. What would you like to see instead then? They say this is a cyber security facility and that it's needed to guard against US enemies. What would you like to see happen instead well, of this catch-all situation? You absolutely need to be able to monitor certain types of information, particularly that kind of information that is potentially dangerous to a country like what we've seen in the past coming from Al-Qaeda. What I really want to see and what a lot of critics of these systems want to see is we want to see an opportunity for citizens to be able to challenge the government's collection of our data and to know more about what they're actually doing with it. Now, after the anti-piracy bill SOPA, which has been shelved, comes CISPA, the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. It already has over 100 co-sponsors, and this time Silicon Valley is not standing in the way. Critics say under CISPA, companies like Facebook and Google could intercept private emails and text messages, then send copies of them to the government. Does it mean, Eric, CISPA, that in fact it will be easier for the NSA to patrol data? Listen, we talked about this when we talked about SOPA. They're going to get to their goal one way or another, whether it's SOPA or CISPA or ACTA, any... A they acronym that you want to have. They keep, form, they're they? going to get to their way, which is to our data. The big problem is that after 9 11, AT&T handed over my and every other AT&T customer's cell phone records to the government without a warrant. I don't know what they did with it. I couldn't challenge the government and their ability to find out what they were doing with my data, but my privacy was gone. This is not just happening in the United States, and that's a very important thing to point out. Uh, just last week, David Cameron is proposing in the UK much, mm. strin much more stringent laws to be able to intercept communication. It's been a big row, and also Nicolas Sarkozy, we have to mention, wants to beef up his Lopsy law. Then also the Hadopi law that's here that allows for a lot more inter in, you know, interference in that. That. So interestingly enough, the West is becoming a lot more like, like China <laughs> and like the East and the Chinese, yeah. which are opening up their net, their web a lot more to more activity, is becoming like us a little bit. So you're seeing this one sense that we're not as free as we think we are and they may not be as oppressed as we think they are. So we need to be on our guard. Thank we you do. for that, Eric. Stay with us. Test 24 is next. Let's introduce you now to a big phone for a deep pocket, the HTC One X. The flagship handset in HTC's new One series runs Android Ice Cream Sandwich, has a quad-core processor and a massive 4.7-inch HD screen. 
that's even bigger than the Samsung S2, carried on a thin, lightweight body. How does it feel to you, And Eric? thin it is. Take a look at this. This is really a beautiful piece of technology. It comes in white and black. This is really HTC's best effort to make a comeback after what really can be described as a dismal year for the cell phone manufacturer last year. This HTC was really the talk of the Mobile World Congress uh, in Barcelona this year, and a lot of hype around this phone. Let's go through a couple of the specs very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very fast phone. This has got a quad-core processor in it. It's got a separate chip just for this camera. Shoots in 1080p video. It's got 32 mega, uh, gigabytes of internal memory plus a partnership with Dropbox that gives you another 25 uh, gigabytes off-site. And it is, so it's a beautiful, beautiful phone. Not just the hardware though, it's also got this nice little thing here, Beats by Dr. Dre. So if you like the hip-hop, uh, you'll so get that cooler, heavy bass it? with it. And you know, this kid's wearing the red headphones. Kids, I sound so old when I say that now. Uh, but <laughs> they, you've got some really <laughs> But those red headphones, so it's really designed to be a music uh, a music player as well. It's and also a, maybe for gaming? So for gaming as well. Now that's really what this big screen really helps out here. Take a look at the comparison with the iPhone. It's much bigger than the iPhone. This is a 4.7 inch screen. So really nice for gaming, but also for watching movies, uh, video phone conferencing. We're seeing really the integration of the web into your mobile device and they want to make this what Rebecca called a phablet. It's not a phone, it's not a tablet, it's a phablet. So this is kind of a hybrid. Is it a fab phablet? A That's fab the phablet, it's a beautiful phone. I, I mean, this is one of the few phones that I would actually consider dropping my iPhone for. Oh. So well, that's, that, yeah, that's a big claim. A, and it an ice cream sandwich is a nice, nice operating system, no doubt. You, you can't eat it, but it is definitely a nice operating system. <laughs> but so are there any downsides? I'm thinking power hungry. Very power hungry. And anytime you get a screen that goes this big and this bright, uh, it's going to suck up a lot of juice. Also, it's doing a lot of activity. That quad core processor is pulling in information, it's pulling in Facebook, it's pulling in video and whatnot, and all of that sucks up the battery. So low battery life, but you can't really get a battery that, you know, with this thin, you know, this thinness, you're not going to get a heavy battery and that was always one of Steve Jobs' biggest complaints. He didn't want a heavy phone with a big battery for that for that extra long play time. 599 euros Ooh. came up. Yeah, it's very expensive. It came out in Europe at the beginning of the month. In a word, what HTC needs to make a comeback? It needs to lower the price of this, but with contracts you'll get this uh, you'll get this price lowered. It's a great phone. Thank you so much for all of that, Eric Olander. Thank you to you for watching this edition of Tech24. Do catch up with us on the social network. Go to the URL coming up in the corner of your screen. And please remember also to follow us on Twitter. Now, we're ending with an intergalactic animation this week and a little task for all you gamers out there. The video's creator, Dutchman Tim Hilkema, challenges you to guess which 20 popular video games are represented by these planets. I'm sure you can do better than we did. See you next week.